Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. This is Tracy Una Wagner with Versatile Inspirations. And today we're going to be discussing how you can create your own magical space. So what is your magical space? Well, it could be just about anything and it can be just about anywhere. But it kind of needs to be comfortable. If it's not comfortable, you're not going to want to stay in that area for very long. It needs to be inviting. It needs to be inviting you into that space. If you don't have anything in there that is inviting and comfortable in that space, it's not very magical. You're not going to want to stay there for very long. Welcoming. Some Somewhere that when you walk into that space, you just feel welcomed. You feel like you belong in that space. And that space is entirely for you. It needs to be equipped. Now, you don't need to have a lot of things in your space. Some people like to have a space that is very sparse. There's nothing really in it. But that is what's comfortable for that person and that is wonderful if it's open and clear and clutter free and maybe very minimal that may be just right up your alley that may be exactly how you want it to be and in that case it's very opening inviting but you may be like me and you may like to have things in your space to where if you're working and creating and envisioning you want to have the tools and you want it to be equipped with those tools so you don't have to go running around trying to find things because if you do sometimes your mind wanders and you walk into another space and you're like oh I forgot to do this oh I forgot to do that oh there's the dishes laying there I should probably do the dishes and you're gonna forget what you came out of that, your magical space in order to get. So if you can put all of your tools or your things that you like, your books, your audios, your essential oils, um, tools such as decks of cards, um, oracle cards, tarot cards, journals, um, pens, and paints, and all the things that you want in your magical space. That makes it even more magical. And then you don't have to go wandering around trying to find exactly what you need because it's all in that space. So why would you want to create a magical space? There's many different reasons, but some of them are just so that you can go and Feel connected to yourself and to the universe, to the world as a whole, just to be. If you are comfortable and you feel welcomed in your space, you're going to stay there for a lot longer. And with that, you're going to feel comfortable enough to be still, just to be still and know that I am. And you can go into meditation a lot easier when you feel connected to that magical space. Your magical space is a place to not only connect, but also to clear, to clear and cleanse yourself and just any of those thoughts that are rummaging around in your, in your head just being able to be still and be clear and that whole magical area will just inundate your very being. Your magical space is where maybe you work. Maybe you do readings for a living. Maybe you do Reiki and it's your magical space where you do your beautiful, angelic, earth angel work, your light worker work. Maybe that is where you do those things. And if so, then you definitely want to have a magical space in order to do that. If you're doing it in just a uh, 
space that you live in or a space that's too loud or a space that's too active, um, depending on the work that you do, it may not be congruent or you may be an art, an artist that actually needs that, that loudness, that street noise, that, um, just noise about you in order to create. Maybe that's the kind of artist you are. And if that is the case, that's wonderful. Make sure that your magical space has those things that surround it so that you can cr create beautifully. You'll be your most best self if your magical space represents what you need and what you want most. What you can include in your magical space, there's tons of different things. It, can, it doesn't even have to be magical. It can just be a plain space that makes you feel magical. It can be a very religious space if you want that you do prayer or that you meditate or that you just connect with angels or God or your version of um, celestial beings. It doesn't matter. The, what you can include are many different aspects. And just some of them are artwork for the walls. Things that cover the walls, like um, they have those fabric um, art pieces that you can just tack up, which are beautiful. And that actually adds a feeling about the space that will make, make it magical for you. Statues. Statues are a wonderful thing to have. They have tons of different statues. Of course, you've seen Buddha and angels, but they have gnomes and fairies and saints, and they have so many different kinds. They have animals, so many different kinds of statues. It's just a wonderful little thing that you can put in your space to make it feel representative of what you want to create or how you want to feel in your magical space. Tools. Like I said, if you're going to be doing your work in that space, in your magical space, you want to have the tools so you don't need to walk around and try and find all those things and lose that creative vibe that's going on. But you want to have your books or journals, pens, paper, paints, um, cards, dousing tools crystals, stones, all sorts of things. Whatever you do, have those tools available to you so that you don't have to go far. They're right there. Altars. Altars are a wonderful thing to have in your magical space. It kind of connects you with whatever it is that you are trying to um, be close to in the spirit realm a lot of times. Not even that, but you can have an altar for nature. If you are in downtown New York and you're not able to get out into nature very much, then having an altar with just representations of nature, whether it's a little tree statue or um, a plant, Anything that reminds you of outdoors, you can have a nature altar. You can also have an altar that connects you with spirit, whether it's with angels, whether it's with ascended masters, or it is with um, loved ones that are in the spirit realm again. Then you can actually alter those <laughs> altars to what you're trying to connect with. And it actually changes the vibe and that magical aspect of that room. It's just an amazing thing to add. And you don't have to make it big. It can be a small place. You can have it in the corner of a room. You can have it on your desk. You can have it on the floor. Just a small space that you can actually put those tokens with what you want to connect with. Candles, incense, essential oils, or anything similar to that, sprays, anything that will actually, when we use scents, we can actually change the vibration of the room. If it's a very 
heaty scent or a very heavy scent, it's going to be more grounding. If you pick a lighter scent, a very fresh scent, it's going to lift up your vibration and you're going to be able to connect to maybe um, the spirit realm a little bit easier. This, The candles and the incense and the essential oils, they all carry a vibration and playing with those different scents, even mixing different scents, is going to create an atmosphere that is going to be very welcoming for you and for what you're trying to do in that area. Color. Color is huge. I, I can't stress enough what color can do for a space. Color has a Color has vibration, just the same as candles and incense and essential oils. Color has certain vibrations. And if you know a little bit about color theory or color therapy, just even going into the different chakras, the original seven chakras, if you know anything about it, you will see that having color in a room will change the vibration of that room and it will match the colors that you put in there. And so if you're looking at a very warm or welcoming or something that um, is very inviting, you're going to be wanting those colors that represent that. And whether it's white or it's yellow or the oranges, those are very, um, high vibrational colors and so they they actually represent just a little bit more of a of a feeling uplifted um there's many different colors and color theory is what you make of it you may not feel the same way about red as someone else feels about red you may want a very welcoming atmosphere and you put a lot of red in a room and for you that may be welcoming but for someone else coming into that room that may be very um, heavy that may feel very heavy maybe more grounding than it is uplifting so you know it really just depends this is your magical space and so with your magical space you want to make it feel the way that you want it to feel and if red makes your vibration high, then you put red in there. <laughs> if you're looking at having a space for a lot of clients or a lot of people that come in, that's a different, um, that's a different thing altogether. That wouldn't be just your space. That would be an open space or a space where more people are going to be coming in. So you may want to look more into what a general feeling is about color and that may actually you may just want to choose white which is um which is a high vibrational color it's the absence of color really but it's still a color and people use white for accents all the time and white actually really lifts people's spirits because it is the color of divine light. It's white. It's very bright and it will help the room to just be more welcoming as well. And that way with white, anybody and everybody is going to be okay walking into that space. And then it's all about the other tools and things that you have in there. Also with color, you can actually accent the room with colors. Like if you use a lot of crystals and stones and gems that uh, are for your space, for your work, then those colors will actually help to raise the vibration or ground the vibration. And having them out will actually change the vibration of the room as well. So with color, color is huge. And just playing with the color and seeing what makes it feel best for you. How can you create your magical space? Well, just remember, you don't have to have an elaborate setting or an elaborate look. Um, I would love to have a space <laughs> that overlooked a beautiful um, scene out in just, you know, a Buddhist area or a Buddhist monastery, something that's just gorgeous and beautiful and you feel very um, connected to it. But 
more than likely we're looking at spaces where we can just go into. Now, a magical space doesn't have to be inside. It can be outside. And that is a beautiful feeling as well. We can be and just be right by the water. We can just be in a field. You can have a magical space that is right in your backyard. It doesn't have to be a big space. It can be a small space. But wherever you feel you want to set up a magical space for you, it can be just a fingerprint of where you are. Just, just a small space just carved out in nature. Or you can have a space in a place where you do yoga, a place where you do meditation, a very sparse location, somewhere that, just a coat closet even, somewhere that is just a space for you to feel like you, a space where you can be the magical being that you are and feel that connection. It can even be at your desk. If you have a nine to five job and you can't get out and about and you can't have necessarily a space all of your own, you can make your space at your computer or at your desk feel more magical just by what you have around you. Like I said, colors, smells, plants, even your screensaver or something that is on your, um, in your little cubicle area or your desk area, just something that will help you feel more of that magical connection. It will help your day go by so much smoother. Also, just remember that having statues and things that you like will make you feel more connected to yourself and to the universal consciousness of the cosmic and of the physical realm. It's, it's amazing what just a few little accents can do for your space. Now, if you have a big space that's open for everyone, that's when we have to create a magical space that would be welcoming for a lot of people maybe. Maybe having little um, poofs or little stools or mini yoga mats or yoga blocks that are helpful for everyone to feel comfortable feel comfortable and safe and welcome and inviting it doesn't have to be elaborate it can just be your special things things that you like having in your space whether that's candles or books or journals or pens paper paints uh clay even um oh my gosh jewelry making supplies just anything and everything tool wise that can help you and making a space feel more magical make you feel special and uh, which allows your mind to just wander and go and dream you can have a small space with an altar that helps you to connect to spirit to cosmic realms, to the fairy realm, to the earth, to other beings, to nature, or to our loved ones that are in spirit. Just remember that you are magical and you deserve a space to help you make yourself feel more magical. Once you do that, it will be amazing at how easy and effortless it is for you to let go, to dream, to invent, to create some wonderful things for yourself and for everyone. And the world deserves your gifts as well. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I so appreciate it. 
you take care. And as always, I'm sending you and yours love, light, and eternal blessings. Bye-bye.